This is the ASUS ZenBook S14, and after months and months of Intel kind of promoting the Lunar Lake CPUs, we finally get to see what it can actually do. Now, this is a product that costs $14.99. This is expensive. So right off the table, this needs to beat out most of the stuff that's on the market. But you're not gonna see that here. What you are gonna see here is more of a balanced play from Intel. With this laptop, you're not getting the best performance, but what you are getting is fantastic battery life to go with it. Now, before I talk about performance, we gotta take a look at the laptop itself. This is the smaller version of the ZenBook S16 that I reviewed not too long ago. Just happens to be using the Intel CPUs instead. The overall design is absolutely gorgeous. Like this is a metal chassis, it's CNC, it's only 0.47 inches thick, weighs only 2.65 pounds. Uh, it's using a special process, a high-tech process called seraluminum. It looks great. Like there's nothing else like this on the market in terms of overall design. They still managed it to look classy without really getting in your face. You touch the top of the lid, there's a little bit of flex, but you don't see a lot of fingerprints. And I love that. Port situation is pretty good. On the left-hand side, you have your full-size HDMI 2.1 port, two Thunderbolt 4 ports, combo audio jack, and then on the other side, you have your USB-A port. One of the stars of the show is hands down this display. Like easy to open up with one hand. It doesn't go all the way back. Like this is the furthest it goes back, but it's fine. It's touch. So there's a little bit of a screen door effect when you're looking at text, but you have to really pixel peep to see it. But it's a beautiful display. Like it has that vertical height because it's 16 by 10. Uh, it's 14 inches. It's OLED, so you have fantastic color gamut and the color accuracy is exceptional. You buy this to watch content on it, your eyes are gonna love you. You buy this to do any sort of design work on it, your eyes are really gonna love you. Okay, so this is what the webcam looks like on the Asus ZenBook S14. Uh, 1080p, you guys let me know how it actually looks. I'm just using natural daylight with a couple of windows in front of me. And uh, yeah, how do the microphones sound? The other thing that I really like is the design element and the holes at the top. This is not speakers. These are basically grill holes to allow air to come into the laptop to cool it down and it just looks cool right like each hole had to be done manually and then you look inside the hole it has sort of a design element it really reminds me of the trees greater look on the mac pros but it's a nice touch the keyboard is fantastic to use i do wish the keys were a little bit more clicky like they're only 1.1 millimeters for travel distance i was hoping for 1.5 but again this is getting super thin so i imagine doing that is kind of tough of course, the right control key has been replaced with the co-pilot key. And then you have wonderful white backlighting that just looks really good with this gray keycap. Sticker placement is top notch. Like some of the best sticker work I've seen in years. Like Intel's really whipping that sticker guy. Like this is even a new sticker design. And this is an Evo edition. So this is supposed to have really good battery life. But I think for $14.99, this shouldn't have a glass touchpad. This needs to have a haptic touchpad. Like $14.99 for a laptop like this, it's time to get some haptic touchpads on it. Now with ASUS software, it doesn't have their Armory Crate because this is not a gaming laptop. and doesn't have their Procreator dashboard, but you do have your MyAsus software that allows you to change things like your performance profiles. Look, the performance profiles on this are your standard stuff. You can easily switch between full performance mode all the way down to standard. There is fan noise. Like we're not rid of that right now. Like you put this thing on full mode, it's gonna get above 50 decibels, assuming what you're doing is pushing everything to its full potential. But if you're just doing normal everyday stuff and it's on standard mode, you're barely gonna hear the fans. Now, before I jump into performance, the speakers inside of here are great. There's four of them. I'm gonna do a little comparison to the MacBook Air and you guys let me know which one sounds better. I As for performance, this is where things get very interesting. I was never expecting this to be the fastest thin light notebook on the market. Kind of tough to do with only eight cores inside of here, but I think Intel striked a good balance. You look at something like single core clock speeds, they're very good. Like they're right at the top with the Snapdragon X Elite, beating out what AMD is currently offering. But as soon as you talk about multi-core performance, that's where things start to change. Like there's only so much you can do with eight cores inside of here. It doesn't even perform as well as some of the Meteor Lake processors that are currently 
on the market. But as I always tell you guys, looking at general benchmarks is not the best way. When you start testing specific applications, that gives you a better picture. Like Photoshop, for example, this did so well. It came in second, like it performed very well in Photoshop, which I feel like a lot of people use thin and light laptops for. If you're talking about video creation, I don't suggest a thin and light laptop in general. You're better off with something with a dedicated GPU or even a MacBook Pro. But this didn't perform as well in Adobe Premiere Pro. Even last year's Meteor Lake CPUs performed higher. If you're a developer, this is probably a good laptop for developing code, but it's not gonna be the fastest. It performed on the lower end compared to some of the competing products that are currently available. But the one area where this really excels in is the integrated GPU. This new Intel Arc XE2 graphics chip is incredible. Like it's even a little better than what AMD is currently offering with their RX 890M. Like I was playing Overwatch and I forgot to change the resolution. It was stuck at 2880 by 1800. And I was getting like 60 frames per second, which is really good for a 3K resolution. But I had to tone it down to 1920 by 1200 because it was getting a lot of drop frames. It just couldn't handle such a high resolution. As soon as I dropped it down to 1920 by 1200 with medium graphics, it was getting well over 100 FPS consistently. Like I could easily play Overwatch on this without any issues. I decided to test a bunch of games compared to what AMD is currently offering. And this thing performs very, very well. Like I wouldn't be surprised if you start seeing this Intel Arc XE2 graphics chip in a lot of upcoming handheld consoles. As for CPU temps, they're pretty good. 80 degrees Celsius when it's completely under full load. But I imagine most people are not pushing thin and light laptops like this all the time. Average core clock speeds are pretty good. Not as high as what AMD is offering, but in all fairness, that's a 370 processor. I feel like a 365 would be equal to this. As for the internals, most of the stuff is soldered on to the motherboard. RAM is soldered on, the Wi-Fi 7 card is soldered on. It's just standard in thin and light notebooks today. Upgradable RAM is no longer a thing unless you buy bigger gaming laptops. But the one thing you can replace is the NVMe SSD. If you want something bigger, you can absolutely swap this one out. ASUS has included a very thin vapor chamber cooler, which obviously adds on to the price, and two fans to help with airflow. But most of this chassis is literally battery. Like this is a 72 watt hour battery and about 16 hours of use plus over 16 hours of use before needing to charge doing my PC Mark modern office test. Now that's not a very good indication of real life use because we all use our laptops differently. It's hard to make it accurate. But what I can tell you, me personally using the laptop, I was able to get through the entire day. And this consisted of Microsoft Office, talking on Discord, um, doing things in the browser, like with tons of tabs open, using Photoshop, testing out Overwatch just with battery. And I was able to get through the entire day and still have some charge left. Like this is something you could not do with previous Intel laptops. So the big question, should you buy this laptop? I think this is an amazing product. It's gorgeous. I do think it's a little expensive at $14.99. I feel like $12.99 would have been the right price point. You have to remember, there's a lot of competition right now. Qualcomm has discounted a lot of their Snapdragon X Elite laptops for around a thousand bucks. And yes, it's not compatible with every application like this one is, but for the price point, it does offer very similar specifications. This Intel Lunar Lake design is not gonna be the fastest CPU. If that's something you absolutely need in a thin and light notebook, you're better off with AMD. But what I think Intel has achieved is a very sweet balance. You're still getting good performance, not the best, but you're really getting good integrated GPU performance. So if that's something that's part of your workflow, you're gonna love this thing. But at the same time, you're also getting battery life that Intel has never achieved before. So yeah, it's gonna come down to pricing and what's available on the market, but don't count Intel out yet. I think this is the right direction for them. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.